Greetings, veggie fans! I'm Funky Monkey. Welcome to my house of love! Now, in last week's shorty, we covered the adventures of Wallace and Gromit. But the four shorts aren't the end of the story. Besides the World of Invention TV series, and the micro-series, Cracking Contractions, there's also the movie, which is today's subject. Curse of the Were-Rabbit! Released in October 2005, Curse of the Were-Rabbit sees our heroes as vegetable security and pest controllers in the run-up to the annual giant vegetable competition. But when something inevitably goes wrong, the stakes grow somewhat higher. So grab your bun vac and don't forget the carrots, as Wallace and Gromit face the curse of the Were-Rabbit. On a clear and foreboding night, a strange presence stirs our heroes into action. Yes, Wallace and Gromit have taken up pest control. Well, I don't know what you were expecting to be under that sack. It is Curse of the Weir Rabbit. I mean, it's not likely to be zombie mice or something, now is it? But humane pest control comes with its own problems. As does Wallace's enduring fondness for cheese. I'm just crackers about cheese. A lot of calcium in them hard cheeses, that's for sure. A lot of calories too. Though they do make low-fat soft cheeses, but by and large those tend to be flavoured with other things. I mean, I once saw this one brand flavouring their cheese with chocolate of all things. Ew, nasty. What's needed here is a spot of innovation. Just a bit of harmless brain alteration, that's all. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> Plenty, that's what. But brain experiments will have to wait, as local aristocrat Lady Tottington has bunny worries. And an unwanted suitor, in the shape of our villain, Victor Quatermain. Our heroes arrive on the scene, and roll out their final solution. The Bunvac 6000! And in a friendly chat with her ladyship, an idea forms. We can brainwash the bunnies! I never said that it was a good idea. Personally, I think it's a terrible idea, but I'll spare you the rant. But inevitably, something goes wrong. <laughs> and it's not long before the side effects of this new treatment become terrifyingly apparent. Them aging CUV village vicar types never cope well with the paranormal. The village is in uproar. Enter Quatermain, who vows to slay the beast. But Lady T's having none of it, and enlists our heroes once more. And so the trap is set. But a mishap at a low bridge leads to another encounter. Gromit pursues. But the beast is not easily caught. And oddly enough, the trail ends at 62 West Wallaby Street? The pair come to a conclusion. We've created a monster. But Gromit's suspicions lie elsewhere. <gasps> what a twist! And what a senseless waste of veg! You could make a cracking soup with all that! And when Wallace delivers the good news to Lady T, his new nature begins to show. Gromit moves to cool his master's ardour, but after a detour on the road back home, Quatermain enters the fray. I know your little secret, pesto. I know. With a view to start one, which goes a whole lot better for Wallace, when the full moon reveals the horrible truth.
Gromit attempts to relay the truth of his master's situation, but Wallace won't hear of it. It's the toxins coming out. Until, that is, he's faced with a rabbity reproduction. <laughs> so much for harmless brain alteration, eh? Which comes in handy when his leprine leanings make inventing all but impossible. Maybe the other me can! Okay, so it worked. This time. But it doesn't mean that brain altering is a safe procedure. I recommend that you don't try this at home. But Quatermain's on the hunt for the wear rabbit. Gromit thinks fast. But Quatermain won't be denied. And so the stage is set for our finale, as Gromit distracts the beast. But Wallace has eyes for more than just giant veg. Gromit is never at a loss and rushes to his master's aid. And Wallace returns the favour. And while it seems for a moment that he might not make it, all it takes is a bit of stinking bishop to set things right. And so our movie ends as Tottington Hall becomes a bunny sanctuary. Quite how Lady T intends to fulfil Hutch's love for cheese is beyond me. But I'm sure she'll figure it out. Anyway, that was Wallace and Gromit. Curse of the Were-Rabbit. And I just have to put this one into the House of Love. It's another triumph from the folks at Ardman, and a homecoming of sorts. As this was the first new Wallace and Gromit adventure for 10 years following 1995's A Close Shave, the plot is, admittedly, rather thin, and adheres to the Wallace messes up, Gromit cleans up formula, but it more than makes up for this visually and in the script, which is filled with little touches, obscure references, and all of the marvellous silliness we've come to expect. Although, the central mystery will only hold your attention for so long, and the clues are there if you know your classic horror tropes. The performances, from a company of British stage and screen regulars, alongside a couple of more Hollywood names, are spot on. And Ralph Fiennes is pitch perfect as the self-important Victor Quatermain, scheming gold digger and natural hunt-happy aristocrat. However, the star of the show, voice-wise at least, is veteran actor Peter Salis, for his Wallace carries the whole thing. The pacing, for an 81 minute film, isn't too shabby, flowing from scene to scene, day to day, and not really flagging too much, propped up with tension at key points. Overall though, The Curse of the Weir Rabbit is a blessing in disguise, a genuine feature length, Hollywood tinged action comedy adventure for all the family. It's cracking! I've been Funky Monkey, wishing you good days, good cheese, and great entertainment. Now I'm off to have a bit of cheese and crackers on a cup of tea myself. So long, folks.
Join the heroic legion of Patreon subscribers today! You could get your name in the credits, early access to new episodes, request your favourite game, movie or anime to be reviewed, or even be in the show yourself. Sign up at my Patreon site. I'll see you there!